Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Addicted to Angling. We're down on the beach again. We're yet again down Felix though. I would have liked to have gone somewhere like Shingle Street, but the fishing at the minute is not that great, so there's not really any point in moving around, traveling distance. This is five minutes from my house. It's a, so, uh, fishing the same everywhere around here. It's whiting, few rays, no coddling coming out at all at the minute, and little fish. But tonight I'm down here yet again, I'm going on the bigger baits. Tonight I'm fishing with a whole squid. I'm going to have sardine wrapped into it as well. Might as well go all out. All out, try and get through the little white and see if we can get something a little bit bigger. Hello, doggo. Got another dog, hello. Seem to attract dogs, don't I? Every time I go fishing. It's all right though, it's all good. Right, so yeah. Anyway, we're down here. It's low tide was around about half past three it's now roughly around about five o'clock so we're looking at around about two hours up it's quarter to five so we're nearly coming up to two hours up so that's when the fishing normally picks up here it's a building tide building tide means that obviously you start off with a neap tide which is the smallest part which is when the moon phase is in between new moon and full moon and now it's edging more towards a larger moon phase that means that the tides are building they're getting stronger they're getting larger that will in turn bring more fish on the feed and with my rod tip I cast out straight away there is tide there I found tide straight away which is always good now in this video I'm fishing into darkness I will be bringing you tips about fishing at night time Fishing at night time is a whole new experience. You know, it is something completely different to fishing during the daytime. You need to have your wits about you and there are certain things that you need to know when fishing at night. So, let's get this session going. The rod's already in the water. Let's see if we can get some fish on the beach for you on this uh, episode. Now, if you look at that, look, the rod tip's sitting lovely in the tide. There is some tide out there. Six ounce lead is what I put out. Six ounce lead is holding bottom perfectly. I think five tonight would have been tripping, as in tripping means it would just wouldn't hold. It would constantly keep bouncing out. But at this moment in time, that is spot on. That is exactly where I want it to be. It's looking good. Wind's blowing south southwest. There's a slight west south southerly trickle within the wind, which you know, if it blows up hard, that's not good. Here. It will push a lot of weed through. But at the minute. It's sitting absolutely perfectly. It looks good for fish, it really does. You know, with a larger tide, it'll bring the white and through. But also, once it eases off, hopefully those rays may come on the feed. But who knows, who knows. Like I say, I'll bring you some tips throughout this episode. You know, throughout this session, on fishing at night. Some of you are maybe teaching you to suck eggs. Some of you may be like, you know, you don't want to hear the tips. You might just be here for the fishing. But I know there is some of you out there that you know, you want to fish at night, but you may be put off by it. It's not that difficult. If you get everything right, you can fishing at night can be extremely enjoyable. It really, really can. You know, it's there's something about fishing at night. On the East Coast, I find that fishing at night is so much better than fishing at um, in the daylight. You know, and don't get me wrong, in the summer, the daylight, the hounds will come out. But at night, I've always had my best sessions here at night. Uh, I think it's because it's a shallower area. <laughs> and I think the fish just feel more comfortable coming in at night and feeding around here. But like I say, let's see. It's the beginning of February. It is warming up massively. Um, we've had that really cold weather. You know, the really cold weather has eased off at the minute. I think it's up to nearly seven or eight degrees in the daytime, which is nice. I'm sitting in my shelter. Lovely and warm, to be honest with you. You know, can't beat it. The wind is trickling through, but obviously the shelter keeps the wind off your back. Keeps you really, really sort of uh, sheltered from any uh, conditions that come through. And rain, I don't think there's meant to be any rain, even though the sky looks rather gnarly. I don't think there's gonna be any rain at all. But right, let's crack on. I'm gonna get another rig baited up and uh, we will see if we can produce a fish. First cast still out there, it's sitting lovely in the tide. I'm getting some twitches, so I reckon the white are gonna come out in force. It's gonna be a case of fishing through them tonight, seeing if we can get a ray out of these white. You never know, it could happen. But right, fishing at night. Like I say, a lot of people get put off by it. It is one of them things that, 
you know, it can be a bit of a daunting prospect for anyone new into angling. My first top tip for fishing at night, if you're gonna be fishing at night, obviously it's dark. The first thing you need is light. You need to be able to see what you're doing. You need to be able to see what's going on around you. Now on your rods, you can get tip lights, you can get bells. I'm not one for bells myself, but tip lights are quite good for a visual indication. I don't use them either. I use my head torch. Now a head torch is one of the most important things for fishing at night. Basically where your head goes, the light goes, you can see around you, you can see where you're walking, you can see what's going on down on the shore when you're winding in. Now I have one head torch, but I also bring another spare one, a very cheap one, a couple of pounds it cost me that I keep in my box. I make sure it's charged up, so if my main head torch goes, I have a spare to throw on so I can see what I'm doing. There is nothing worse than fishing somewhere with no light pollution at all, pitch black and your head torch fails and you can't see what you're doing. It's your session ruins and secondly, it is extremely dangerous. It really, really is. So first top tip, make sure you have light. Grab yourself a head torch. You can get them cheap on eBay or to be honest with you, spend a little bit more, get a better one that's rechargeable. You know, it will pay dividends in the end. It, they will last longer, they will provide more light, and you will be able to see what you're doing. Well, first cast came back completely untouched. I've now sent my second cast out. Whole squid with a uh, sliver of sardine riding, riding piggyback to give a little bit of extra scent in the tide. Now, going back to fishing nights, one of the main things about fishing nights is safety. Now, before you go out, and don't, I'm not, you know, I'm not telling you how to be, I'm not being like an overbearing parent or anything like that, but let somebody know where you're going. Let someone know exactly where you're going, what time you're planning to come back. Always make sure your phone's got charge on them. Text them when you get there and text someone when you're about to leave. Just so everyone knows where you are. So if anything happens, if you don't turn up back home, you know, for any reason whatsoever, we can, well not we, but whoever cares for you, whoever is out there waiting for you to come home, can send the relevant authorities to the correct place to make sure you're all right. 99.9% .9 of the time, you might have just sat there and thought, oh, I'll have one more cast, oh, you know, it's fishing really well. But then, you know, people need to know where you are. Fishing at night can be dangerous, you know, I'm not gonna lie to you. If you go to rocky outcrops or any type of beach, anything can happen especially if you're by yourself so yeah second top tip just let people know where you're going and let people know your plan for when you're out now the weather is still is fantastic it's fairly warm the moon is fairly cloudy night so there's not much moonshine on the water which could prove to be very very good to be honest with you tide pulls eased off a little bit obviously the start of the ebb is absolutely training through and now the tide pull is eased off lead sitting perfectly rod sitting absolutely spot on really confident with the way i'm fishing all i need now is fish so let's see what happens you never know you never know something could grace the beach hopefully in this video well matt's top tip of the night when you catch a decent fish, make sure the GoPro turns on. I've just had a ray, probably around about five, four and a half, five pound. Took it, done an amazing piece of footage with it. Or what I thought was an amazing piece of footage. Got it in, the tip absolutely folded round, you know, she was there, had her in. I'm so happy I've had her. Just checked my footage, and when I put my finger to press the record button, because I've got the light on top of the camera, in my excitement, haven't hit record. Got some photographs though. No photographs of me holding it, so you could sit there for all I know. You could be sitting there going, yeah, rubbish, he hasn't caught one. But trust me, I've just had one. I'll put the pictures up after this little segment. She was beautiful. <sighs> but I didn't record it. Oh, you have no idea how annoying that is. Really, really is annoying. Oh well, we plug on. They're obviously about. Let's see if I can get another one and actually get some footage with one rather than just pictures. What an absolute donut. Absolute donut. Right, well after that absolute shambles where I forgot to hit the record button, of course. <laughs> I can't believe that. What a beautiful fish as well. Absolutely stunning fish. Right, let's get back onto the uh, tips and hints in this video for fishing at night. My next hint and tip is always check the tides and the weather. 
try and fish your night sessions around the best tides if you're going out at night you need to make it worth your while if it's a building tide flooding tide you know that you uh fish is better where you live go out on that tide obviously ebb go out on the uh, go out on the ebb it will pay dividends it will absolutely make one hell of a difference to your fishing like i say also check the weather at night time you don't want to be sitting there and all of a sudden get caught up in a nasty storm middle of the night cold and wet you know check the weather if you've got a shelter by all means go out in whatever weather you can but i know some people out there don't have a shelter check it make sure you go out at the best time possible it will make your fishing much more enjoyable right well after the shambles of not being able to record nothing my next rod you know my next baits out there i'm sitting there i'm praying for another ray so i can get one on film rather than just having photographs you know it's it's devastating it really is oh dear what an absolute nightmare but oh well these things happen we crack on um obviously the squid and heron is working i've still got another three hours until high tide so there's always time to get another one. Oh dear you, you couldn't make it up could you you really really couldn't but let's crack on let's see if we can get another one on the beach tap tap bang bang pull round slack nowhere near as big as the first one but still an absolutely stunning female ray what an absolute beauty eh beautiful fish absolutely beautiful like i say nowhere near as big as the first one i have but they're on the feed like i say the rod tip tapped a couple of times slackened slightly and then whop, round again squid and sardine doing the do look at that trying to flap away that's how they swim through the water what a stunning fish though eh absolutely beautiful fish i love them don't get me wrong in some areas now they are so prolific that people don't like catching them they call them flat dogfish but to me they are a stunning fish number two for the night first one on camera thank you very much for uh, Miss, mrs Formback for giving me another chance to show one on camera she thinks that she's flying through the air what an absolutely stunner right i'm going to get this one back get another bait out and see if we can get another one see if we can get one the same size as the first one i had this one's probably about what three pound maybe three and a half the other one was about five i reckon let's get her back i'm going to take you with me while i put her back actually february rays eh absolutely fantastic there used to be a time on this coast on the east coast where you wouldn't even hear of a form back ray now you get them quite a lot right i'm now by the water's edge Away she goes. Yeah, I got one on camera for you. That's a bargain. Absolute bonus. Two rays in the bag. Nighttime session. Let's crack on and see what else we can get. Oh, what an absolute <laughs> slab of a ray. Look at this. Felix Doe is on fire tonight. Absolutely on fire. She's full of pups. Absolutely full of pups. Across the wings. She's 58, 58 centimetres. I don't know what that equates to, but look at that. That is a slab. That is a proper slab of array. Oh, look at that. Full of pups. Oh, full of pups, full of egg sacs. Like I say, 58 across the wings. I don't know what that equates to. I'll look it up in a minute, but she gave a heck of a fight on the way in that is a stunning stunning fish what an absolute monster i'll probably say it's around about nine pounds i don't think it's going double figures but i'll check in a minute she's heavy she is really heavy <laughs> what the heck obviously messed up that first one now i'm getting so many opportunities free fish free rays no whiting or anything so far and look at that <laughs> A hey, beautiful fish, absolutely beautiful. What a clonker. Right, I'm gonna get her back. It's actually hurting my arm lifting her up. 
58 across the wings. <laughs> stunning fish. Absolutely stunning fish. Look at that. That is a proper form back ray. They're in to lay their purses and she is going back to lay hers. Stonking, brilliant. Right, I'm gonna get another bait out. Literally, it's coming in one after the other now. Fantastic, even if I don't get any more. That is a fish to remember, that really is. What a fish that was, eh? I was not expecting that after that first lost fish. Well, lost fish, the fish that I didn't actually get on camera. You know, a little bit downbeat to be honest with you. I thought, oh no, that's the only chance gone. Three rays now, biggest one, like I say. 58 across the wings. I'm putting that around about nine and a half pounds because that was a really deep fish. A really deep fish. Should really have my scales on me, but you know, I just didn't bother. I don't normally bother to be honest with you, but what an absolutely stonking fish. And what I'm catching it on, like I say, single hook pulleys again, as per usual, with squid with a little piece of sardine riding piggyback on the back. Just a, literally enough to get the fishy smell in the water. Not loads on there, it's, it's bound into the squid. Frio, Cato hook, just whacking it out there and it's just sitting there. I mean, a little while ago, let me just check my rod. The rod's sitting lovely in the tide. Did start to see some trembles a couple of minutes ago as well, like, you know, little tiny, not white and taps, but just look like something was sitting on the bait. But that last one, it went tap, 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 and then just bang, slack on the floor, and the old braid dropped down, knew it was on there. Gave a lovely fight on the way in. <laughs> what a lovely fish that was. So yeah, free rays. Like I say, winter fishing. Well, I say winter fishing, night fishing. It's prolific. It really, really is. It, you know, another tip for you, because I know this, uh, this video was going to be about tips for fishing nights. What I was going to say is, I've got a little bit of water on the lens there. I'll have to sort it out in a minute. Make sure you're warm enough, you know? Make sure you're warm enough because fishing at night, obviously it does get colder and the worst thing you want to do is be sitting on the beach, having a nice time fishing away and you get too cold. Obviously take another coat with you, take some layers with you, make sure you are warm enough for the nighttime session. <laughs> but yeah, right, I'm gonna hook this onto the tripod. I'm double pattern because literally I'm bringing these rays in, dropping the bait on the floor with the ray, clipping another one up, smacking it out, and then, uh, yeah, that last one was not very long at all after the second one. But it seems to, you know, the tide's coming up now. That could be their feeding spell done, but you never know. You never know, there could be time for more. So let's crack on, let's see what happens. Well, to be honest with you, three o hooks, sardine and squid baits. Wasn't expecting to get that. The size of that, palm size dab. Didn't even get an indication wonder why there was no white or anything taking my bait and that little bugger's on the end oh well that's the species first dab of the year coming up to high tide we've got about there's a bit of tide pull out there now as well massive bit of tide pull so i reckon we're coming up to high tide probably looking at about 45 minutes uh, i'll probably fish it over the top down a little bit and see where we go from there but that little bugger there is not what i was expecting to catch from that massive ray <laughs> to that little dab, eh? Anyway, next bait's out. It's out there. It's in the tide. Rod's sitting lovely, so uh, let's see where we go from here. Right, it's nine o'clock. It's getting close to the high tide. I think I'm going to call it a day after this cast. One last cast. Squid and sardine going out into the uh, into the depths. Who knows if there's going to be a ray. A couple of casts ago, I pulled out of another fish. Felt quite heavy. It was giving me quite a nice scrap. It was only on for about a minute or so, and then I felt the hook pull. So, obviously wasn't hooked as well as it should have been. But I'm going to send this one out there. See where we get with this. Like I say, just fish it over high. Once slack water comes, give it 20 minutes or so over slack water. And then I'm probably going to call it a day. So, last cast. Let's see if we can get the last cast lottery. Let's see if we can get one on this and get the fourth ray of the night. So I've had three rays so far, one dab, and like I say, I've pulled a hook on one as well. So not a bad session to be honest with you, but let's get this out and let's see where we go. Well, that last cast didn't produce anything and that is the end of the session. 
but what a session it's been to be honest with you. A few hours on the flood side, down here at Felix though, three rays, lost one and that little dab, I'm happy with that, I really am happy with that and also I hope you have taken some of the uh, hints and tips from this about fishing at night and if you've ever thought about fishing at night before and thought you couldn't do it, hopefully now with these tips you will realise that it's not that difficult, it's not that scary, you can actually get down, go on a night session, have a productive session, but most of all, have fun. Now, my stuff's all packed away. Everything's packed away. I'm now going to go home. Thank you very much for watching, I really appreciate it. You know, hopefully you're enjoying the videos now they're coming back. I'll be carp fishing again soon, so there'll be another carp fishing video coming out, and also the sea fishing videos will keep coming out too. Thank you very much, and hopefully I will see you very soon by the water's edge.